Next up is going to be our time accumulator. Let's have a look how that guy works. And if probably is self-explanatory, it accumulates time and saves it. So let's see how that would work. And here we are going to say that we want to accumulate a up to a six seconds. Do that. And also, as you can see in here, it's got is a reset button there. So you can reset the accumulation if it's required. So let's give him a, a push button two and to a uh, activate the timer. Let's give him push button one. And as the previous guys, got to give him an output. All right. Let's compile. Well, let's have a look how it works. All right, as you can see in here, every time I will uh, push uh, push button one, the timer runs, and as soon as I let it go, it will stop. But it will keep the time. I push it again, it will keep the time. Push it again, it keep the time, and let's push it. Keep holding it, and it will every time there's going to be some form of action going on in a push button one, it will take that time and accumulate it together and keep counting forwards until it reaches the six seconds that once we have set up in PT and they will activate the output. And only one way for you to uh, stop that and start again is to reset it. By clicking reset, you start again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is T on timer, which is time accumulator, as it says. Alrighty, so the next up we're gonna jump into the older types of timers. So uh, let's start with this guy in here, which is a, a start a Start pulse timer. It's pretty much very much the same as generate pulse But they are being set up a little bit different and if you're working with all the all the old the, the equipments Then you are definitely want to watch this. So uh, Let's go in here. Let's create a contact again. Make our push button in here. Uh, push button in here and then we grab that timer in here and put it right there as you can see in here now This one looks much different than the other guys You can see the question marks on the top is actually we need to create a DB block data block for him to uh, store its values So for that we are gonna go into the Add new block and in the here in the data block. We're gonna call a uh, timer We're gonna be using this this data block very much for all the timers. We're gonna be checking and uh, right in here, we need to go in here and set, uh, select this guy in here, IEC timer. So once you do that, it will clear that data block specifically for timer. As you can see, now this looks like exactly like the newer timer. So all we need to do now, go back in here and take that timer and put it right on the top. There we go. So now the top is happy so on right in the bottom you just need to enter the seconds so we're gonna go or whatever the time it is i'm gonna type in 5s and there we go so that is happy and for it to work obviously it needs to activate something so for that we're gonna give him a another uh, line in here so and we're gonna say he's gonna activate a contact and then it's gonna activate the coil and for that one you're gonna go into our little list go into the data block and your uh, queue right here for that timer is going to be the one that's from this timer. So from there on, we're going to be activating a coil. So and that's going to be our coil. Uh, for testing purposes, that will do. Let's compile. It's happy. Let's run that into our PLC. There we go. That's all in. So by clicking a push button, the timer has received its pulse and it's running its time. And as you can see, it works exactly like generate pulse. It has stay is staying on for duration of the time. Here we go, and it works pretty good. And this timer is the older timer, so I haven't done that. So then let's jump on to our other timers that are pretty much set up the same way. There we go. So let's now now let's grab a start on delay timer again. We're gonna create a contact in here. And a start on delay timer in here. And remember, we already created the data block. We're going to be using the same data block for checking out all the other timers. So from there on, so let's give him a timer. And obviously the time, how long the on delay is going to be. We're going to give it a five seconds. And again, for this one in here, let's give him a button one in here. And in here, let's create that. And again, we go into timer output and give him a coil to turn on output one there we go let's compile it send it in 
and let's see how it works by uh, clicking a push button if you let it go the timer stops as you can see if you let it go the signal has to stay on for the time to run out for him to activate the output so if it runs out of five seconds as you can see my output is on as soon as I let it go it turns it off that is timer on delay so now that we've done that so let's delete this and check out the timer off delay again works out pretty much the same principle we give him a data block that we already already if you are obviously you're going to be using more of these times you can't just use one time one data block for all of them so just keep creating data blocks as you need per each of these timers and give him a five seconds compile load and here we go so again let's push the push button as see, as soon as you click the push button, the receiver is pulsing, has starts is off delay, and it will turn off at the five seconds. So, like exactly what does it explain? After five seconds, it goes off. It turns the thing on, and then it goes off. And here we go. That will be time off delay. Next up, let's check out a time accumulator. Let's see how this guy works. Pretty much the same the one we already checked out in the newer version, but this one we're checking out the older version. So let's go offline. Him again, again, don't forget to give him a data block and how long we accumulate him. Five seconds, compile it, and here we go. As you can see, as his younger sibling, we click the uh, every time he receives the pulse or let it go, he keeps accumulating time as uh, the signal it keeps getting pushed and the time just keeps accumulating. But as you can see in here, we don't have the reset button, so that we need to create. So let's go offline and create the reset. So have a look how that's done. So then now we give him a, a contact. It's going to be our push button two. And in here, what we're going to do, we are going to add timer reset here. Here we go. So from there, you can, by the way, select it in here as well if you wish to. I just want to take it from here to see where that comes from. And in here, we need to tell him what is he resetting. And we're going to type in timer. So here is our timer. By clicking the timer, make sure you remove the dot and then uh, remove the dot and leave and there we go he has adopted that so now he knows what is he resetting so uh let's compile it and then and there we go our self explanatory as you can see my time still shows a uh, three seconds i will activate my push button uh two and time gets reset it again go a little bit forwards a little bit forwards i give it them signals in here and i can reset it uh, by clicking a push button two and that is timer reset and last but not least we are going to be checking out a load time duration which is a very interesting instruction so pay attention see how cool it could be for some specific applications so let's create a, a, a third push button in here to test out how that would work so let's take that that and go into push button three and in here what we're going to do we're going to take this load time duration what this load time oh not here there what this load time duration is going to do it is able to as long as this push button is pushed it's able to override this value as long as the, this guy is pushed and it will activate for, for, from this timer itself so let's see how that works so again we're going to tell him where where this value is going to be loaded we're going to say it's going to be in uh, this guy in here and obviously we'll say we're going to say three seconds okay so now when this push button is going to be, if this push, and push button is pushed and this push button is pushed, the priority will be given to three seconds. So the timer, uh, timer will turn the output on after three seconds, not five seconds. So let's have a look how that works. And here we are. So let me just get it better in a picture. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to close my push button three. And as you can see, when I hold my button, it will activate at three seconds. As you can see, five seconds was ignored because that timer, the PT, the load of time, will take or take the priority. So let's reset it and let's move it now. As you can see, if that push button two, push button three is not pushed, it will go to five seconds to start. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is load time duration.